Today I went to an allotment site on the banks of the River Thames and met a very interesting plot holder. Welcome, I'm Sean and I've been growing my own food since I was a teenager and I love this lifestyle. As I approach 50, there are many attempts to lose weight and become fitter and healthier. Outside of gardening, I love to ramble and explore the countryside while also spending time with my two feral rescue cats, Amber and Topsy. The ultimate dream is for us all to live off grid and off the land. Join me to see where the journey takes us. Fulham Palace Meadows Allotments is located in the London borough of Hammersmith and Fulham. The site was a gift from the Bishop of London in 1916 and is exceptional in that it covers an Anglo-Saxon site of historical importance and is therefore protected from development. There are currently 406 plots on site. Beautiful laid out allotment here and a very good idea of putting a hose pipe I presume it's got holes in along the way and all you have to do is just stand at the edge, water them and all your potatoes are watered. You could do the whole thing in 10 minutes. My name is Bridget and welcome to our allotment. Um, my husband and I have had this plot for about seven years and I'm interested in the plants that nobody else is interested in. So in particular today I'm interested in nettles this year. So if you come over here you'll be able to see this is a nettle project that we did in memory of Hiroko Oshini Ush who's one of the lecturers at Roehampton University and the idea she had was that to make a commercial product from nettles. So here are our little necklaces we made and some flowers that were made by one of the Roehampton students. And basically we did the whole process from picking the nettles to um, splitting them. And really the easiest way is to just jump on them. And if I jump on them, they'll, they'll start, you can hear them splitting. And then what I'll do is I'll start stripping off the, the, take out the inner bast and I'd strip this off. Now on the site uh, people have lived here since Stone Age times and the way you know when, when one's going fishing and things like that you would need twine and, and nettles would have been a good old uh, staple for, for people living um, in that period on the site. So we've got our nettle fiber and we can make some string. So the problem with UK nettles is that you need about, you need that amount of nettle to create this amount of fiber. So it's a 10% yield. But Himalayan nettles, you get a much higher yield. You've got a slightly, a, a much taller plant that is um, organic. It's um, sourced. It's environmentally friendly, and it's a fair trade product. Unlike cotton, so the problem with co we have with cotton is we have um, the the water footprint, if you like. So. One pair of jeans, how much do you think that would, how many litres of water from planting to wearing? In the You're right, in the thousands. Seven, the United Nations says 7,500 litres. And I composted a pair of my jeans and I landed up. Can you see this fine white fibre? Yeah. Well, in stretch jeans, you've got all that plastic. Yeah. So it took about uh, four years for the genes to compost down. This will take thousands of years. Yeah. That is still very strong yeah. Yeah. nylon thread. Yeah. Um, so I've got, I've started appreciating as I've done the nettles, it, 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 there's no water footprint. Yeah. I've started as we were making the nettles and as we were weaving, I just became more mindful about fabric. Mm. 
and then it's sort of going back to my wardrobe and thinking well could I apply that as a patch mm. um, could I mend and make do could I do a clothes swap um, what can I do to avoid buying mm. new mm. and if I am going to buy new organic cotton it's half the amount of water but then over here we've got flax that I'm growing to, to make linen and I'm, I'm dying. So what I'll do is I'll talk to you a little bit about the dying. And if you want to have a little mm. pull on that, you can see how strong that is. Whoa. And uh, whether you think a Stone Age person would be able to fish or hunt okay. using that. So you can actually make nettle twine as you running around as a Stone Age person. I made this necklace, this is nettle twine. This is my little Stone Age necklace complete with my moose tooth because they would have been moose uh, in the UK at that time and my amber and my stone and my shell beads and my um, bone beads but you can make color so what I tend to do is I grow things for color so these are my onion skins uh, here's my rhubarb. We've got lots of yellows this year because I've got rhubarb and carrot tops. Uh, I've so got apple. Leaves, yes. Yeah. And rhubarb leaves will be a mordant. And then you've got madder, which is, uh, which is like sticky bud, uh, goose grass. Oh, right. So it's a relative of goose grass. And the Romans used it because if you're wearing madder and you get a wound when you're fighting the legions, well, you don't see the blood. So it helps people stay brave. Of course, the Celts were using woad. So here's my own woad I've made from my own plants grown on my allotment. So here you've got the woad seed and you'd be harvesting the woad leaves in the first year and you get that blue so that's the first half of the process and the second half involves stale urine preferably from a redhead they say but you know <laughs> and I'm not going to open that but you can see it's yellowy color as I lift it out the water, the air will change it to blue and I'll have a denim blue so indigo or woad gives you blue but in this country the 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 Celts uh, the Romans, the Vikings, the Anglo-Saxons would have all been using woad. Um, Queen Elizabeth I banned woad dying near, I think you had to be five miles from any of her castles. You can understand the quantities of urine needed to make <laughs> industrial quantities of colour. Is that the woad over there? Right. So here we've got woad here. There we are. So it's that I would be taking and processing. And here's woad seed. It doesn't keep very well, so I'll, I, I grow some for seed every year. And then here's my flax. So obviously I can eat it. So I think we can safely call it a vegetable. Um, there's my flax seed, so it'll come out like that. And here are my flax, with, it'll have lovely blue flowers. That's what it looks like. So you know Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair? Well, she was flaxen. She was spinning flax, so she was in a tower because she was a slave, basically. She was kept in the tower because she was good at spinning. She would have been drop spinning like this. So would Sleeping Beauty. You can't prick yourself on a spinning wheel. It would have been a drop spindle. And what, what they're doing, obviously from medieval times onwards, people were using spinning wheels. But for all ancient, history people are using drop spindles and it's usually a, a little bead on the end of a stick and you're doing that and you're just spinning it and then little advert for Zara home stores <laughs> so that's been 
uh, it looks like it's been hand spun but machine knitted. So the, the, what we happening is big fashion houses are now becoming aware of the environmental footprint that, of fabrics and they, they're trying to be more sustainable. So I'm doing, a, I, I love spinning because I was born fidgety and um, I love making twine. So I think some of you have seen this and some of you haven't. Um, but the people in the living in, in um, Stone Age times would have used stones, but they would have also had fibers that we wouldn't find because they're so beautifully compostable. And one of the things they can't would have used is linden bark, which is a, this tree over here. And you get the equivalent of a sort of leather from it. And I've got a piece here. You can try and have lots of people have tried to have it break it. But if you tug it, you'll see it's, it's quite sturdy. And so you can use that um, for, you can use that as an alternative to say cat gut when you making your tools and here I've got my nettle, nettle twine I made earlier and here's some nettle. Now these two please don't pull them because they will break that is rhubarb oh, wow. but and this is um, this is the, le the stalks and this is dandelion stalk so I'll use those to make a little, maybe twist them round to make a little brooch or a little uh, mat to put my coffee cup on later. So that's it. And then people with all abilities can dye and, and they can spin and weave. I've got a friend who writes children's stories and we were talking about um, the princess who spins and makes seven shirts because her brothers have been turned into swans and um, she's she's um, really only got the use of one hand so she made this beautiful hanging ah. mobile so she, what she did is she used she spun like that on her on her leg so a lot of ancient people when they weren't using drop spindles they would have just done that and then rolled it up their leg like that and it's oh, the strength is in the twist don't worry some of them are stronger than others and it's just getting that twist in and then you've got to find piece of of something to use thank you for so much for coming Hopefully I'll return to the Fulham allotments in the coming months. But until next time, bye for now.